Praise the Lord, Revelation. It's to him that we give the glory today. And I'm so thankful that I can be with you here in Revelation, Frisco, Texas. And uh, uh, Ben has asked me uh, several times if I would come and be with you. And when he made the offer for me to come this time, I I said, well, I said, maybe we can work some things out. And we did. So here I am. (laughs) But uh, I'm very thankful uh, for you. I'm thankful for your love for our, my children and, uh, the, uh, that is your pastor, and uh, Benjamin goes way back in my life. He was my oldest son, and uh, I remember when he was a young boy, we taught him God's Word. And uh, when he said we went to church on a daily basis, that's pretty much it. Lots of revivals, lots of churches that we visited. And then along came Mark, and that's my baby. He's back there <laughs> taking my picture right now, and he's the biggest baby I've ever seen. <laughs> But you know, he has a heart for God just as big as anybody else's. And I'm so thankful for my sons today. I'm thankful for their beautiful wives. Thankful for Tamara. And I'm glad that Tamara's parents, Steve and Irma, is with us today. And uh, I'm glad and thankful for this beautiful lady right here on the corner. Her name is Kim. Y'all know Kim? And uh, both these girls are sweethearts. And uh, of course, into my life comes two fine young men that call me Papa. And one of them sitting back there running my notes for me today. And the other, I guess, is in his class, Levi. He's my Taekwondo expert. And uh, very fluent in Spanish. And I'm so proud of these boys. And, uh, but I'm so proud of all of you today. And uh, I just want to be able to stand here today and tell you that, that we love Revelation Frisco. The very first service that I experienced here was, was over at the uh, other building that, we, that you was in. And it was for your launch service. And there was probably 200 plus people there and a very powerful move of God moved through that building. And God spoke to my heart and told me, this is it. This is what I'm going to do in this community. God's going to honor the ministry of my son and his family. And he's going to honor the ministry of you in this community. I want to tell you today that God has something special in store for us. And I'm looking forward to it today. I don't want to overlook one person. That's Amanda back there. Amanda comes out of our, our home church in Alexandria, Louisiana, and her father and her mother, I've been knowing them since I was a little boy. Her dad is still my oldest friend, and I'm very thankful for them, and uh, the, I'm very thankful for Glenn. I sent him a little note, told him I would be here today, and I'm glad that I got to see Amanda and the grandchildren today, but God's so good to us. I'm going to be reading today from the book of Psalms, the 66th chapter. I'll probably have several scriptures to refer to today. I'm going to try to be as comfortable as I can. I've already been told that, uh, that you was told that I'm a little more Pentecostal than your pastor. And I don't know if that's true or not, because I know where he came from. Amen. But I go to the book of Psalms this morning. Read with me, if you will. Psalm 66 and 12. Thou hast caused men to ride over our heads. We went through the fire and through the water. But thou brought us out into a wealthy place. Almost five years ago, in this community, Ben and Tamara decided to do a work for God. And I believe that God's going to honor that today. I listen to the messages that my son has ministered over the five years. I listen to them quite often. And I find myself in, in saying, God, you've given me this child, this now a man. And he's, he's so intelligent. He is very intelligent. And he's one of the best Bible teachers and Bible ministers I've ever heard. And I've heard a lot of them. And I said, if there was some way that I can bring something to Revelation to cause them to be better than what they are today, that's what I want to do. Because I'm not going to be able to compete with my son. But I'm not here to compete with him. I'm here to bring you God's word and establish it, help establish it in your heart. You see, this is something that I believe. I read the other day and I said, this fits Revelation so well. That God has given this body of believers a fingerprint that nobody else has. So that you can leave an imprint that nobody else can. This community has a lot to look forward to. And I pray until Jesus comes. 
And I believe today that you're about to enter into the greatest season of your life. Because God is about to move into your family, into your business, into your church, into your finances, and into your own personal life in a greater way than you've ever experienced in the past. Are you listening to me? You already probably know what I'm sharing with you, but that many of God's people today recognize that they're about to experience a change. They're about to experience it. And God's getting ready to do something wonderful in their life. We know today that God has a desire to meet our needs. We know that something big and powerful is about to happen. We don't know when, but we know that it's close to happening. We can feel it. It's in the air. God is getting ready to bless the church. I came to tell you that you're closer to your breakthrough than you've ever been before. You're closer to your breakthrough than you ever have been before. Closer than you ever would have a thought you would be before. You're closer to a miracle more than you realize this morning. I'm not talking about God going to change things down the road for you in years to come. I'm not talking about your miracle or your breakthrough coming off sometime in the future. You're on the edge of your breakthrough right now. Can you believe that with me this morning? I said you're on the brink of God doing something wonderful in your life. So I give the title to my message today. Is edge standards. Edge standards, standing on the edge, waiting for God. For some of you, this may be the very day that you experience the miracle or the breakthrough that you've been praying for and believing for. Has anybody in the house been praying and believing for something tremendous to happen in your life? The truth is you may not understand everything that's going on. It may not be what you think it ought to be but you still can believe that you're on the verge of a change. In spite of the fact we know that hell hits you hard. In spite of the fact we know that you're going through the greatest trials of your life, but you still believe your change is coming or you wouldn't be sitting in the house today looking for spiritual guidance from God. There's still faith in this house today. And I believe that God wants to honor the faith of these people. God wants to do something special in your life. And I'm here today to tell you that I believe that God can work in your life. I believe that God can change your heart. I believe that God can change your mind. I believe that God can change the outcome of things in your life. If you will trust him and believe him. You have to continue to believe that the promise that God has given you is about to come to pass. Yes, God. You still believe that your dream is about to come, become a reality. Yes. Yes. While you may not have any evidence that a change is about to take place, you have to have confidence yes. that he is on, an on-time God. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Everybody say, yes, he is. Yes, come on, everybody say, yes, he is. Yes, he is. In spite of the fact that in the natural Nothing seems to be changing. You can still have faith and you can still believe that if God said that he will do it and if he spoke it, he will bring it to pass. If he said it, you can believe it. Numbers 23 and 19 says, God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Have he said... And shall he not do it? Yes. Or hath he spoken? And shall he not make it good? Amen. So in spite of the fact that nothing seems to be changing in your life, in spite of the fact that everything looks like it has always, the truth is you know in your heart if you trust God that a change is coming because you have a promise that God has given you. If all you have is a promise from God, I have good news for you this morning. I said, if you have a promise from God, the good news is this, is that a promise from God is all that you need. That's all that you need. I want you to think about something. All that Abraham had was a promise. 
Isaac was born when he was 100 years old and his wife Sarah was 90. With nothing but a promise, Moses led the children of Israel out of bondage. Nothing but a promise. All Joseph had was a promise that that promise brought him out of a pit and out of the prison and finally into the palace. There's a lot of room for him to say, this is not my game. This is not my place. I don't need to be here. But he knew that God was ordaining things in his life and bringing him to a place that he could use him in the right position. When Jesus died on the cross, he knew that after three days that he would rise again because he had a promise. He told them, he said he would rise again because he had a promise. He was placed in the tomb with a promise. Three days later, he walked out of the grave with the keys of death, hell, and the grave because of a promise. He said in Revelations 1.18, I am he that liveth and was dead. Can I say that again? I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And he says, I have the keys of hell and of death. Read that in your word, Revelations 1.18. So because you have a promise, you know things will not remain the same. Because of your promise, you know that your future will be better than your past. You know that a change is going to come. The world cannot understand you. The family may not understand you. Even church people may not understand you and they can't figure you out. The reason they can't understand you is because they see what you're going through, but you still have a peace and you still have praise. And you have a peace because you know that you're not going through what you're going through alone. You know that the Lord God Almighty is with you. Come on with me right now. He said, lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Matthew 28 and 20. You still have a praise because you have a promise. I don't know you, but I promise if I ask every one of you to raise your hand, if you had a challenge in your life, most everybody in this room would raise their hand. You may be having a hard time trying to figure out what's going on at this present time. You're probably in a time when your mind is one telling you one thing and your spirit's telling you another. Have you ever been there? I've been there quite often. My mind's telling me this is going to happen and that's going to happen. That creates worry and grief. But the spirit says, I'm in control. The spirit says, I'll give you a promise. The Spirit says, I've given you that word, and I'm going to live by that word. The best way I can word this is, is that your body is still in your present. Your body is still in your present. It's still experiencing difficulties. It's still experiencing pain. It's still experiencing uncomfortable situations. But your spirit has stepped into your future, and your mind is confused because it's trying to figure out what's going on. Did y'all hear that? Your spirit knows things about your future that your mind cannot even comprehend. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Paul said it in 1 Corinthians, the second chapter, verse 9 and 10. But as it is written, (laughs) everybody say the word. Come on, everybody say the word. But as it is written, I have not seen We're talking about present. Nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God had prepared for them that love him. But God. God. It might be bad if I just broke into a dance, wouldn't it? (laughs) But God God. hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit... Searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. In your present difficulties, in your present challenges, understand that there's a God so much bigger than our challenges and our difficulties. I'm not living for this world. I'm living for that world. And so my spirit says tomorrow will be different in your life. You see, your spirit has stepped into your future. Your spirit has stepped into your tomorrows. Your spirit has stepped into a place of revival and restoration and renewal. Your spirit has a place of provision and prosperity. And your mind, 
the present is confused because it does not understand what's going on. Your body is about to catch up with your spirit. (laughs) And in return, you're getting ready, Frisco, Revelation Frisco, to walk into a place of victory, a place of blessings, a place of prosperity, greater than anything you have ever experienced because God knows your future and he's given you a promise, he's given you a word, and you stand upon that today. I've come to minister to you today several weeks ago when Ben made contact with me about preaching today. God's spirit began to move upon me. I felt a holy unction of God's power. And he says they're standing on the edge of a breakthrough. Now, can you take that or not? That's why you're closer to a breakthrough than you think because... You cannot tolerate things you used to tolerate. That's why you can't tolerate certain people anymore. You're so close to your breakthrough that you don't have time for man's foolishness, man's drama, man's strife and negative talk because you want to live for your future. You don't want anything to deter you and hold you back and keep you from achieving what God has in store for you because what God has in store for you is so much greater than what you have on this earth. Yes, that's good. Paul told the church at Philippi, Philippians, the fourth chapter, verse 13. He says, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. We're talking about spiritual things. You need people in your life. Like Pastor Ben and Pastor Tamara. He's all these other good people who believe in your future. They believe in you. They believe in your future. They believe that God's going to give you your promise. You need people in your life that will celebrate you and not people who tolerate you. You need to tell people in your life who are jealous of you There's no need to be jealous for me. I can't help it. It's just my turn. God's getting ready to show me my future. That's why Paul said it this way. He said to be absent in the body is to be present in the future. To be present with him. To be present in his glory. I want you to shout something for me. Shout, I will shout with you tomorrow. Come on. I will shout with you tomorrow. I I might not be able to shout with you today because my body won't let me shout. But I can tell you this, what I can see in the future through the promises of God is that tomorrow we can all shout together. We can all dance before God. We can all let the power of God move our hearts. So celebrate my victories today. And we'll celebrate your victories tomorrow because you're standing on the edge of a breakthrough with God. Have you ever wondered why that life is dealing you such blows? Why in the world that hell is hitting you so hard? Why do you think you're going through all this that you're going through? Why do you think you're experiencing strange trials in your life that you've never had before? 1 Peter 4 and 12 says it this way. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. Why has there been so much Demonic activity against you, against your family, against your ministry, against your business, et cetera, et cetera. Let me tell you this. When there's an increase of problematic activity, it's a sign that the devil has discovered your purpose. 
The devil has discovered your purpose and he is out to destroy you and to keep you from achieving your future. So I'm telling you today that you're on the verge of stepping into the greatest season of your life. Revelation Frisco, you've had the best teaching, the best ministry that anybody could offer you. You've been having your honeymoon and enjoying all that. Huh? But God says, your future is more important than your present. The honeymoon's almost over. It's time to birth some children. It's time to grow the family. Are y'all with me? It's time for God to show you what he's made out of. He's ready for you to step into your season. The devil don't want you breaking out in your praise. Have you ever wondered why the preacher says, say amen? Have you ever wondered why the preacher says, hallelujah? Have you ever wondered why the preacher says, clap your hands, all you people. Clap your hands. Come on, clap your hands with it. Come on, clap your hands. Put them together right now. Come on, clap your hands unto the Lord. Give him a hand praise. Give him the power and the glory. Give him praise in the midst of your difficulties. You're making the devil mad. You're about to walk. I feel the Holy Ghost. You're about to walk into the greatest season of Revelation Frisco. But you can't do it by living in the mindset of the present. You've got to say, God, show me my dream. Show me my dream. Show me a little bit of my future. I want you to notice something about Jesus Christ. Do you ever notice that he was the word incarnate? And he never began his earthly ministry until first he had a fight with the devil. Come on now. We're talking about Jesus Christ. He never showed out until he had a fight with the devil. He had to be around 30 years old. Huh? After Jesus was baptized in the river of Jordan, the voice from heaven spoke and said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. As soon as he was announced to the world of who he was, the Bible says he was immediately driven into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Jesus Christ was. Here's the scripture, Matthew 3, 16 through 17. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lightning upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Matthew 4 and 1 says, Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit, the future into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And after Jesus went through temptation, when? After he went through temptation. After he experienced an increase of demonic activity against him, Satan left him alone and let the angels come and minister to him. He was too much to handle. Here's what Matthew 4 and 11 says. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. Live for your future. Live for God. The Bible tells us in Hebrews, the 11th chapter, in the heroes of faith, that the people died with their eyes on the prize. 
in this body. They received nothing, but in the future, they had what was coming. There's always a blessing on the other side of your battles. And after Jesus battled the devil, the angels came and ministered to him and he began his earthly ministry. After the temptation, he returned in the power of the Holy Ghost unto Galilee and went into the temple and began to read from the book of Isaiah, declaring that the Spirit of the Lord was upon him. Luke 4, 14 says, And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and there went out fame of him throughout all the region round about. And there was delivered unto him a book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of the sight to the blind, to set at liberty them which are bruised, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Before Jesus began his earthly ministry, he experienced a tremendous increase of opposition against him. And the same is true today. Before a person receives a miracle or experiences a breakthrough or enters into a new season of their life, they seem to always go through a time when hell hits them the hardest. That's why the scriptures tells us that there's joy is going to come in the morning. If you can make it through the darkest part of your night, I want to tell you that joy, the 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 joy of the Lord is going to come in the morning. Your faith is going to be tested. Your present is going to be tested, but you got to keep holding on. There seems to be always a time that we go through things that look totally opposite of what God showed us we was going to have. Think about this. Before Joseph goes to the palace, he goes to the pit. And then he goes to prison. Before David became king, he spends years running from a man he was going to replace, King Saul. But in the end, what God promised come to pass. Here's what I want to tell you this morning. If you stay faithful, everybody say faithful. faithful. If you stay faithful unto him, what God promises will always come to pass. Here's what I want to tell you. Where you are right now is not your end. Where you are right now is not your end. The pit was not the end for Joseph. Running from Saul was not the end for David. Egypt was not the end for the children of Israel. And the tomb was not the end for Jesus. In the end, you will go where God said that you would go in the beginning. You can live for that word. You will have what God said he would give you. You will do what God said he would do. And you will become what God said you would become. You may not be there in your present, but you're on your way. You may not be where you want to be, but neither are you where you started from. Come on. You're making progress, Revelation. You're making progress. Don't be fooled by the circumstances around you. Don't let the battle that you're in distract you. Because where you are is not your end. Regardless of what it looks like, stick with what God showed you. you, Because what he promised, you will receive. Because God doesn't lie. You got to stand in the faith like Abraham. You got to believe that God will fulfill his promises you got to believe that a change is coming. I want to read this to you. Paul wrote this in Romans 4 and 20. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Quit focusing on what you're going through and begin focusing on where you're going to. Quit focusing on what you have and begin to look at what you're going to have. Quit looking at where you are and start looking at where you're going. 
Quit looking at everything against you and begin to look at all the things that are for you. Hear me? Because when God is for you, who can be against you? <laughs> you're going through all that you're going through because you're going somewhere. Israel went through the fire and through the flood before they ever entered the promised land. In Psalm 66 and 12 that I read earlier, we went through the fire and through the water, but thou hast brought us out into a wealthy place. Fifteen hundred miles wide, fifteen hundred miles high, street of gold, gates of pearl. The foundations are different gemstones, and our future is there. I'll give up all this here. I don't know if y'all understand what I'm feeling right now. But I feel something tremendous in the spirit. And it's taking my breath away. It's not about here. It's about there. It's not, not about having things here. It's about getting that over there. You may be on fire. You may be in the flood but you're on your way to a wealthy place, a place of abundance and overflow. Because remember this, the fire is temporary. The flood is temporary. The present is temporary. And the setbacks that you're having right now in your life are positioning you for a comeback in this life. Your struggle will not last forever. Your pain is not permanent. You will not remain where you are forever. Because a change is coming and you're too close to the miracle. You're on the verge. You're on the edge, standing, waiting for the breakthrough. Everybody say, we're on the edge. Everybody say, we're on the edge. When somebody asks you where you are at the present time, you tell them, don't judge me by where I am now. Because I'm not where, because I'm where I am is not where I'm going. Where I am is not where I'm going. Where I am is not where I'm going. This is not the end. Don't judge me by what I have. Because what I have now is not what I'm going to have. Don't judge me by what you see. Because what you now see is not what you're going to see. It's not what you're going to get because I'm a miracle in the making. And what God has begun in us, he will finish it. We walk around sometimes like we're the finished product. (laughs) Maybe we got it all together. We can shake and bake and talk to talk and we can walk to walk. But the difference is, is that when the fire gets a hold of us, it consumes us. We live in the present, but we live for the future. That's why the Bible says, don't lay up in store here the things that moth and rust doeth corrupt, but lay your treasures up in heaven. Are you with me? Am I doing okay? The Spirit of the Lord's in the house. You haven't arrived at your destiny. Here's what Paul told Philippians in 1 and 6. Being confident of this very thing that which he hath began in you, a good work, you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Regardless of what you see, how you feel, there's a change coming. You may be weeping today, but you'll be rejoicing in the morning. You can't give up now. Because you're so close, you're so close to the breakthrough. You need to get determined in your heart. And you need to let your faith be so strong in God that you look at that which is facing you and say, I'm living for Jesus Christ no matter what. The sad thing 
is that most people give up when they're on the edge of their breakthrough. Because they walk to the edge and it's darkness. And they look down and they don't see any hope. They don't see any more distance that they can go. This is it. This is all I've got to live for. It's darkness. Let me tell you, there's so much more to that than what you can see. There's so much more to that than what you can see. Most people give up because before the things they believed and prayed for is about to come to pass, they want to give it up. Don't give up on your dream. When the heat is turned up, some people want to give up. But you can't give up now because you're about to walk into the greatest season of your life. If you stay faithful to God, God will do what he said. If you stay faithful to God, Revelation Frisco, if you'll stay faithful to God, you'll reap the harvest. The family will grow. It's almost payday. I'm trying to bring this to a close. I don't know how long I've been preaching. Am I in the red yet? Galatians 6 and 9 says, And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season. Everybody say due season. Everybody say due season. We shall reap if we faint not. So I looked at the word due. It means it's owed to you. Just like you work on your job, it's owed to you. Paul said, because you have been faithful, it is due to you. It's your due season. Five years, it's time. Cut out the honeymoon. Get out of business. Have some children. Make some things work for you. Grow the family. Grow the family. You're not going to have a better pastor than what you got. Not in Frisco, Texas. This is the greatest one right there. Ask me and I'll tell you again. Did y'all hear that? Just ask me and I'll tell you again. I want to close with this story. I know you're closer than what you think you are. I did not have this in my notes and it just kind of popped up in my brain. So I quickly added it to my notes. Matthew, the 14th chapter, Jesus had needed to pray. So he sent his disciples out onto the water so he could have some time alone. And while they was out there, a storm brewed up. And the Bible says it's during the middle of the fourth watch. Anybody know what the fourth watch is? It's between three and six in the morning. Now, they done been out there a while, ain't they? Huh? If I was out there that long, and hey, I love to fish now. That's another story. That's another sermon. This may be another sermon too. Are y'all ready for it? But Jesus decided to visit his disciples, see how they were doing. And it was storming. And the disciples were frustrated and tired. They was weary, fighting the storm. The Bible says that Jesus came walking to them on the water. Everybody say the future. future. Came walking to them on the water. And all of them began to cry out in fear. That's what the Bible says. They began to cry out in fear. Except for one. Except for one. You see, God cares about everybody. He cares about you and you and you and you and you and you. He cares for everybody. But there's something that moves God into the supernatural in the present. And that's faith. But there was one that looked up. He wasn't thinking fear. All he could see was Jesus walking on the water. And he thought to himself, ha, ha. He's walking on the water. He wasn't hollering, come get me, Jesus. 
He was saying, he's walking on the water. If he can walk on the water, I want to walk on the water. He wanted the future. He wasn't immortal. He was a mortal man. And the Bible says he cried out to the Lord, not in fear, but he said, Lord, do you hear me? This is Peter over here. And I'm looking out there and I see you walking on the water. And can I walk on the water with you, Lord? Can I just come on out there? He said, well, come on. <laughs> Anybody know what happened? Everybody cried out in fear. The waters are rushing and gushing over the boat. And Peter just, hey, he didn't think about putting his foot over. He didn't think about it. He wanted what God had to offer him. And God said, step out and come. And he stepped out on the water. And the next thing you know, he was doing the supernatural. He was living his future. He was living in the power of God. And God moved upon him. And he realized where he was at. <laughs> Sometimes we step out by faith and God honors it. And we wake up and realize, hey man, I'm in trouble. <laughs> That's, what happened to, That's what happened to Peter. He done this come out of the daydream thing. And he saw this storm ruining around him and the waves crushing around him. And he started to sink. Y'all with me? Yes. The supernatural, the future said, oh, you have little faith. Yeah. Why do you doubt? Yeah. You're doing something that nobody has ever done before. You're taking steps that nobody has ever done before. You're walking on water. And he reached out his hand to him and he picks him up. And when they stepped their foot into the boat... Everything got calm. You see, sometimes God's going to offer you an opportunity, Revelation Frisco, to do that which is supernatural. Whew, I'm getting another wave of that Holy Ghost. How much time we got? There ain't no time. He's giving me a thumbs up. I hadn't been here long enough. You are going to see the opportunity in the next few months, probably days or weeks, that God's going to give you an opportunity. Every one of you is going to have an opportunity to step out of your boat by faith. But you've got to keep your eyes on Jesus Christ. There's not one person in here that does not have the, have the capability of working in the supernatural. Not one of you. It doesn't take the preacher laying hands on you to heal you. It can be your closest friend. It can be the person sitting next to you right now. As we stand to our feet. If you've never experienced the power of the Holy Ghost in your life, I know that Pastor Ben uses Holy Spirit, but I'm old school. If you've never had the Holy Ghost with the evidence and speaking in another language, I'm not pushing another language. I'm pushing the Holy Ghost. I'm pushing the supernatural. I was six years old. Y'all hear that? I was six years old in Thibodeau, Louisiana. And the Spirit of God began to move. And there was another girl six years old. We was the only kids in the church hardly. Just I wasn't very many of us, a couple, two, three, four of us. And the Spirit began to move. And at the age of six years old, I felt this Spirit come over me. And I began to talk in a language I couldn't understand. Six years old. Next thing I know, I had dancing in my feet. I began to run as a small kid. I would run across the front of the church. I run around the church. I, I jumped over the heater. Hey, I was a heavy set kid. I'd never felt anything like that in my life. People said, well, I tell you, Pastor Sanders, I don't believe in all that shouting.
Jesus didn't shout. But everything he touched shouted. Everything he touched danced. Everything he touched moved. If you've never experienced God in the supernatural, today's a great day to experience it. If you haven't been baptized in the lovely name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, you need to sign up to be baptized in His name. And when you repent of your sins, God's going to honor that. Repentance means you're not going to go back and do the same thing all over again. You're going to make a 180 degree turn. You're going to make a decision to walk away from that which is bothering you now. You're going to walk away and you're going to live for your future. When you go down in the name of Jesus, it's going to wash all your sins away. But the Bible says it's for you and it's for me. It's for your children and their children too. Barbara and I was flying in yesterday and uh, my wife has always wanted to be on time and I was having a problem walking in the airport so I had to roll me in a wheelchair down the, through the airport to get me where I was going you can tell I've been touched today a little bit ain't I? And, uh, so as we got to where we was going to the gate we was three hours early maybe three, maybe three and a half hours early and I got to thinking here I'm going to be sitting in this chair for another three and a half hours this is not good. So I threatened to get up and walk off. She said, no, you're sitting right there. <laughs> so she decides she needs to get up and she goes walking around and she comes back and there's this, this uh, gentleman that comes walking in and had a, had a, a tie on and a suit and pants and a shirt. And had his coat had laid over his chair. And when Barbara walked by, he had all this, his Bible laying out there and all these notes all around him. And uh, she got to talking to him. And she said, what are you doing? He says, I'm getting ready for my preaching tomorrow. Are oh, you a preacher? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, I'm a preacher. So he gets on the airplane. I'm sitting, sitting up close to the front. So he walks in. I grab him by the arm. I say, where are you preaching tomorrow? He looks at me like, I don't know who in the world are you. He says, I, I passed a pilgrim rest in Dallas. Well, the key was that Barbara standing there. He said, I'm reading out of Matthew. And the Holy Spirit began to move all over her. The Holy Ghost. Whew. You ever felt the Holy Ghost? I feel it right now. It's like a chill running all over me right now. Oh, refreshing. So he gets on the plane and I thank him for who he was. And I got on my Facebook while I still had a chance and I looked him up. I looked up his church. Big church. Big church. Big old choir. And the Lord spoke to me. So I got off and he comes walking by me and I grabbed him by the arm again and I pulled him down close to me. I said, when God dips his paddle into your anointing and he begins to stir it, everything around you is going to feel it. He shook. <laughs> he said, I accept that. I was in my, had my worn out blue jeans, my big old shirt on. You know, he probably thought that that guy was messed up anyhow. But he accepted it. So I want to tell you the same thing I told him. Today, God's going to dip his, already has, Got his paddle into the anointing of Revelation Frisco right now. And he's getting ready to scull it, turn it. And he begins to turn it. Folks, you're going to have to get up and get it or get out of the way. It's going to happen. And it's ready to happen to some of you right now. If you want to be touched of God, I want you to come down and on the front. Come on.